for people that haven't seen it. I mean, it, it, that's just like as painful as a hit by pitch, yeah. like somewhere other than the head, like like as painful as it could look. Mookie Betts hit on the left hand by a 98 mile per hour pitch, fractured left hand, won't need surgery, so like is expected back. He will return this season. Um, the general length of an absence for an injury like this is like two to three months. We mean it could be sooner. But I guess smart money would be he's probably not back until August at the earliest. Probably can't win NL MVP if that's going to be the case. And Mookie Betts was the favorite in that market. So here's where we stand right now at BetMGM now with Mookie Betts out. By the way, he's 25 to 1. I always find that to be funny. They're probably not going to play for two months, 25 to 1. Uh, Shohei Otani, Mookie's teammate, is now the favorite, plus 175. Bryce Harper of your fighting Phils, plus 300. Fernando Tatis, who Ken talked about last week on the show of the Padres, 9 to 1, along with another Mookie Betts teammate. You can tell the Dodgers are good in Freddie Freeman. Marcelo Zuna of the Atlanta Braves has been awesome this year. Ozuna, 10 to 1. The injury makes things a lot clearer, right? There are three people competing for something and one gets hurt. There are two people, you know, I was trying to think of an example uh, off the top of my head right now. Oh, uh, so Josh Young for the Rangers got hurt in like early August, I think, last year, something like that. And he was one of the two contenders for AL Rookie of the Year. He gets injured and Gunnar Henderson becomes basically like an if he doesn't get hurt he wins al rookie of the year and the market didn't price it like that but that's how i felt about it so we had a it made it a lot clearer there were two one got hurt it's very obvious where we are headed the rest of the way to me this is an injury that actually makes things much more complex and much more obscure in terms of of where, where we're going and what's going to happen mookie bets was like an easy answer so far i think for voters even of what do you who do you want to vote for for an most valuable player wasn't by far the best player in the national league wasn't even by far the best hitter in the National League, but he was just the right combination of pedigree, team success, individual statistics. He was an easy answer. No, you get no flack from somebody for saying Mookie Betts should win NL MVP. His injury thrusting like everyone else into the spotlight, I think causes the voters to have to answer some really tough questions going forward. Not tough, like actual, t- like tough baseball questions about who do you, what do you value and who would you want to vote for now that he can't win? If he's out for the amount of time that we think he cannot win this award, he is removed from consideration. So you're right about that. And I, what I mean by that, you mean like, well, what do you mean tough questions? Uh, typically, you would just try to answer the following question, like either using wins above replacement or just like in your head, like who do you think the best hitter will be in the National League this year? You will frequently arrive at the answer to this question, like who's going to win NL MVP? And you're probably going to guess Shohei Otani. He is definitely the most likely player to be the best hitter in the National League. That is true beyond a shadow of a doubt that he's the most likely, but he's got three and he's a favorite to win this award. So you might be like nothing going on. He's got three subjective red flags. And I do think this is an award market where you're going to have to start thinking subjectively a little bit. Baseball awards, usually you don't. Hey, here's one or two numbers. We know who's going to win. This one might not be like that because he's got three red flags and they're all subjective. One, he's a multiple time winner who won last year, voter fatigue. Two, he was involved in a gambling scandal before the year started. Three, and this is a bizarre, crusty old set of voters. And then three, he DHs. And this is a this is like the most obvious red flag where it's the, like, all right. The crusty voters might be more offended by that than the gambling scandal, well, by and, the way. And, and I, I'm not the putting those right. I'm not putting those in the order of importance, but just there are three things I would at least know about if I was gonna before I jammed him to win this award. I think he is very likely to finish as the best hitter in the league. Even if he does that, what do you think happens? And that the answer to that's going to be, well, how far ahead is he from everybody else, right? What if he just laps the field offensively? I think the decision's probably pretty easy at that point, right? Easier to write the name down. Hey, look, guys, he just he shattered all the offensive records, or not even records, but just he so distanced himself from everybody else that he'd be an easy vote at that point. I think that's the cleanest way that this plays out. But what if he doesn't do that? And what if Marcelo Zuna is the guy who's next to him and they both DH all the time. We don't even have to get into Ozuna's track record. But like, what if they both DH all the time and they don't contribute defensively? Are people going to be like, okay, who's next? Like, is there anybody close to them? So you got, obviously you want to know the margins between all the hitters. But I think there's a chance, a lot of the times it's just, we get to the end and it's so obvious. Hey, that was the number one guy. Not even cl- Ronald Acuna Jr. You know, Goldschmidt. You get to September, that's the winner. Duh. Like, of course, that's the winner. I think a lot of people think we're headed that way with Aaron Judge. We're going to get to September and be like, yeah, it's there. Like, what are you even talking about? Of course it's there. It's so obvious. We have a chance for this one to not be like that. And it could not be like that because we have a lot of players who are really good. Or 
it could not be like that because Otani and Ozuna are a little weird as candidates who would just dominate voting um, based on the fact that they like don't play in the field all the time and with Otani, a couple of these other considerations. So I, just to wrap this up, I still think this is a terrible market to bet into. I'd still wait because not I don't even really like Otani a whole lot, and I don't like the people after him in like a in the way they're priced right now. I like Tatis at like a way longer number. Um, I think you could still wait this one out. So it's weird. We had an injury. You would think that would create a betting opportunity. I kind of still want to keep waiting. I really I don't really have anything in this market. Bets gets hurt. I still kind of don't want anything in this market. Kind of want to wait it out. It's one that could get subjective though. There are ways where if the candidates are close, if they're close. That there are some subjective criteria that could be uh, could be applied here. Value on Mookie Betts now that he's twenty five. Maybe at fifty. <laughs> maybe, yeah. maybe that'll be the line yeah, of demarcation. That's, that's my, my that's my fair price. Yeah, that's my All fair right, price. The hashtag yeah, value. I thought Germany looked awesome, and I'll say this about Spain. And Spain was like I I bet Spain to win the tournament. They were the team that I talked about all last week. They did beat Croatia three nil. If Croatia could finish like could have actually like had competent finishing in front of the net, that game could have been entirely different. So I, I was a little concerned, scoreline notwithstanding, for Spain's defense and like what that's going to look like moving forward. Spain will play Italy in the next game, and like I don't know if I'm going to bet Spain in that game. I may just like watch and see how it goes. So England, to me, Ken, least impressive of the big teams. Doesn't mean they can't win the tournament. Germany, most impressive thus far of the big teams, even with Spain beating Croatia 3-0. Yeah, and it's funny. I mean, we could talk about like who the most impressive player was, even. And I'm sure there are people that are like, guys, it was one freaking match. <laughs> like, like you can't overreact. Like, what? So to win the tournament, it's it's three matches in group play and then four knockout. Yeah, uh, round of sixteen, quarter, semifinal. Yeah, they already played one seventh of the freaking matches. <laughs> so like, yeah, kind of have to form opinions. We're already running out of time, and the finals always like one nil too. So in turn, you know, it's always like a cagey. I think is the word people always use to describe, especially the knockout rounds. So yeah, like I think it's okay to just be like, yeah, who looks awesome? Who looks in form? It's a subjective conversation. I'm still where I'm at before the tournament. If I think I'm just looking at the odds board right now, if I think France, England, Germany, we haven't seen Portugal play yet, but let's just say them for now because we haven't had any evidence to the contrary. Franks, France, England, Germany, Portugal, Spain. Like, they're all through. Maybe they all win their group. Like, that's totally possible. Okay, then this board isn't going to change at all going into the knockout round, probably, until we know the matchups. Until we know, like, well, is there a random team? Like, does Belgium get a third place? And they get in and they play somebody really good. Okay, then that might be a reason to make a bet. If you think that's going to happen, then that's talking about path. And that's a reason to make a bet. Because you're like, well, if you look down the road, they get a much tougher draw. And so that's how it plays out. Sure, like you could concoct arguments like that. But like, again, what is the entry point to bet on a team to win this tournament right now? I didn't see one going into the tournament. Croatia, who was kind of like the sleepery team. Denmark, these teams. People bring these up. Like, it, Croatia got trucked and i know you bring up like well it could have been a lot different they also lost you know like it also it wasn't a, a performance gonna make the price drop a lot let's put it that way the netherlands oh, that was in a... like croatia less it just it's oh, just like sure. i just don't feel as good about spain as like this as the score indicates but yeah croatia yeah. like they, they didn't score any goals and they should have scored at, at least right. one or two at least and like the netherlands played a really weird for like they get behind right away and they have to kind of claw the whole time and, and you know they i think it proved to be the better team but look like nothing's changing then so again, let's say we're heading into every team playing their second match. Like, what is the re? Like, look, we'll bet the we'll probably bet a country to win this tournament. Why is that time any time soon? Why is it? Why is it right now and not five days from now and not entering the round of sixteen or not entering the quarterfinal round? All these teams look like they're going to be around. What's the hurry? Like, what's the hurry? And then maybe somebody, maybe maybe somebody takes an injury, and then we get to have a conversation. Or maybe one of these teams actually drops a match and looks bad. Then we get to have that conversation. Maybe the path looks like it's going to break really easy for one group or really difficult for the other group. Then we can have a conversation. But like, nothing's happening yet. It's all holding serve. So like, don't feel there's no FOMO here. You're going to bet the winner eventually, or at least I am. And what's wrong with just waiting even longer? 